Hello and welcome to the Skylight Magazine vodcast. This month we're at the Salisbury Star Party in Wiltshire, where astronomers from around the country have gathered to observe and image the night skies. This year's Salisbury Star Party saw over a hundred astronomers gather in the village of Sixpenny Handley to socialise, listen to talks by other astronomers and of course get out observing under the rural night skies. I caught up with the event's organiser Darren Kitson to ask him how he got into astronomy and how the Salisbury Star Party came into being. Um, well, funnily enough, I was just uh, flicking through a magazine one day and um, saw a few fancy pictures in, uh, believe it or not, the Sky at Night magazine, which got me hooked on it. I bought myself a little Celestron SLT114, which I still have to today. Uh, I've never upgraded my scope. I've kept exactly the same one because it does me fine. And um, that's pretty much how I got started. Tell us a little bit about how the star party itself got started. Uh, it started on uh, a forum for stargazers and uh, started with about four of us in a field. Got to be known to be quite a popular star party and uh, the name spread. It uh, started off with four, uh, grew to about 22. Last year we had about 87 people and luckily this year we've now got 130 people. So uh, it's definitely grown in popularity. All sorts of astronomical equipment was ready for use at the Star Party, from go-to telescopes to huge Dobsonians. I talked to Melanie Jones about the telescope she brought along. Well, one of the scopes I've brought with me today is this Tau 100 RS. It's a four-inch Russian Acromat, um, F9 uh, focal ratio. Um, she was actually bought as the second scope uh, for, this, uh, for this party. Uh, the primary scope was actually to be this one, but last night we ran into some uh, major technical problems uh, with the high-tech equipment and we sort of went back to this very classic piece of... So back to equipment. basics, really? Back to basics, very much so, yes. And is that a sort of observational astronomy you like to do? Yes, very much so. I don't do any imaging, I only do observational work. So why do you come to Salisbury Star Party? Uh, well, it's just a, a good place to be, lots of other astronomers, a chance to um, look at other equipment, um, try stuff out before you buy, um, and actually a chance to, uh, for me to actually make my equipment available to other people so they get to see some of the equipment that they might have heard me talk about on online forums. How did you choose what equipment to bring to the Star Party with you? Uh, well, actually, for this one, I thought just for everything I own. Actually, I've got the Tau 100 RS. Um, there's a Skywatcher 200 back there. And in the tent, there's a Skywatcher SkyMax 180 Max Sutov. Uh, that's just about everything. You cover for all eventualities. Covered for all eventualities, yeah, very much so. And, and actually, bringing this was actually a lifesaver last night when the, the high-tech equipment broke down and left us without anything. It's quite interesting to relearn the sky again after being reliant on GoTo for so long. The dark skies of Wiltshire provided astronomers with a perfect opportunity to collect good quality data for their astroimages. Between showers, I caught up with Ian Melville, who had brought along his imaging rig, and I asked him just how good the skies had been. Oh, well, the skies have been fantastic. We've had two clear nights on the, uh, in a row. Um, and to be honest, at this time of the year, with the Milky Way right overhead, um, you can see the cloud of the Milky Way almost from one horizon to the other. It's been fantastic. What sort of targets have you been imaging with your setup? Uh, well, on the first night, um, I wanted to go for something low in the south. Uh, so I tr was trying for M16, the Eagle Nebula, uh, which I've got some frames of. And last night, I switched to something overhead, the Crescent Nebula in Cygnus. And how easy has it been for you to uh, set up all your equipment? It was quite easy, actually. I've been to a few of these sort of events, and you do get into a, into a rhythm with it. So, um, and you've also developed certain techniques, like bringing toilet tents to cover the scopes over once they've been set up, which saves a hell lot of time taking the things off. Because the scope's now aligned, all I have to do is take the toilet tent off, connect the computer, and do a go-to, and uh, the targets will be back right there in the middle of the chip. Many of the astronomers at the party chose to do a bit of observational astronomy under the dark skies, and even some expert astroimagers swapped their CCD for an eyepiece, as I found out when I spoke to Rob Hodgkinson. Primarily, I'm an imager. Um, I got into astronomy when I was very small and used visual telescopes, and in the last four years I've uh, discovered the joys and pitfalls of imaging. So I've got an observatory at home where I do most of my imaging from, uh, but when I come to something like this, a star party, I see it primarily as a social event because with imaging it's very, ooh, how do you say, very isolated. You spend a lot of time just staring at a computer screen and hours and hours and hours getting freezing cold and waiting for images to come in. Um, 
but on this sort of thing where there's a social gathering it's nice to actually meet everybody and everybody you've seen on forums and talked to on forums it's nice to actually see them in the flesh and interact socially with them. Now you don't actually have any imaging equipment with you today so what are you hoping to do at this star party? Look through various people's wonderful telescopes. I've got a 12 inch Dobsonian in my tent as well and um, look at a lot of the stuff that I've actually spent hours imaging but never seen which I did last night which is great. I looked at the Veil Nebula and the um, oh, Dumbbell Nebula sort of which was fantastic visually um, and various faint galaxies which I've spent hours imaging but um, are actually quite difficult to see visually and it's quite quite an achievement. I don't use any go-to or anything like that. All my imaging gear is all computerized and my visual gear is completely the opposite. I actually find things by star hopping. For Ian Pass, this was his first experience of a star party, so I wanted to find out what he hoped to get from his visit. It's amazing. To be honest, it's the first time I've ever camped. So my wife was a bit apprehensive for if I was going to get on camping and I found it absolutely brilliant. We've had four really good nights and we've been still out here at half past four in the morning, just wait, watching the dawn break, waiting for the sun to rise and then going to bed just for a few hours. I've only had three hours of sleep today and then hopefully it's going to clear up again tonight and do exactly the same again. What sort of objects have you been looking at with the Dobsonian you have? With the Dob, I've been looking... Um, my main role is, is astro imaging, but because I've come with the Dob, it's got no computers or nothing, I need to learn how to, use, how to find things in the night sky by star hopping. So my friend Jonathan's been teaching me that. So I've been looking how to find M51, the Whirlpool, um, M57, the Ring Nebula, um, M81 and M82 in the same field of view, M4 in Auriga, I think. Um, and then I've also been looking at lots of NGC numbers. Uh, and some are so faint, I don't, I don't actually know that they're there, but John can, can assure me that that's what we're looking at. For some of the attendees, the star party wasn't all about looking at just the nighttime sky. Richard Winter brought along his own specialist solar telescope to look at our nearest star, the Sun. The solar telescope that I bought today is a little unique in the fact that it is the one and only of its kind. Um, the optics were made by a guy called David Sinden, who died some years ago, but was a master. Um, optician uh, and has made many of the world famous telescopes. So in that sense it's a very special uh, solar telescope that I enjoy many people at, at various star parties around the country. And what sort of things does it show you? Well there isn't anything that it won't show you in the hydrogen alpha band is what I actually look in. Um, so you'll see all the flares and the prominences and anything that's going on in the sun. So it's a very um, sensitive telescope in that size because there's no um, hindrance for the light path as it comes in. It's a full length refractor um, and a singlet glass so it's, it's very accurate, very sharp and people who look through it always go away very happy. Well the sun has come out and there are clear blue skies above us here in Salisbury so hopefully there's a great night's observing ahead of us but unfortunately that's it from us here at the Scar Night Magazine vodcast. We hope you've enjoyed this look at the Salisbury Star Party. Clear skies and we'll see you again next month. Don't forget to pick up a copy of the magazine this month. We've got a full guide to the new observing season ahead, an article on how to build your own Crayford focuser, and a review of the new Skywatcher Sin Guider Auto Guider.